The projected person stands around him as though they are protecting him more so than they are harming anyone else intentionally to protect Sadako from them, whatever that is. And we're assuming it has something to do with Sadako because it very much looks like Sadako from the well, the yeah. white dress, bluish kind of skinned girl. But it's yeah. the younger version or a younger girl of her in some cases as well. So we're not sure exactly what's going on there. There's a lot of plates that are kind of spinning, but it's essentially this. All the weird, eerie shit that's happening is either Sadako's power and Sadako's doing it subconsciously because she's working through some trauma or it's Sadako's power which is becoming more and more prevalent as she gets to this age and perhaps it's growing beyond her control. Either way, it's really hurting at people around her and making her the target of a basically a crowd of fucking villagers with pitchforks. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it's like, I, well, well, yeah, yeah, and she has very little outlets now for friends. It's one. And, <laughs> I mean, you know, so shit. Right. It's it's not always a good thing for somebody who's uh has a psychosomatic power. You know what I mean? Right. To be this isolated and made to feel it, like the other is yeah. definitely not a good thing for someone that has that need to connect with other people so as to not torment them with their power. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. It's it's a really interesting way of telling the story, but again, after following Ring 2, I can see where this may have been a bit of a letdown for some audiences. Um, I could totally see that. 